Hey everybody, I am back with another mail day, and I just wanted to recap uh, some of the local, some of the purchases I've recently gotten in the last 10 to 12 days. So uh, starting with a couple uh, nice quality uh, commons from the 50s, a 1953 Keith Thomas, then a couple cards from uh, 1957 tops, a Bob Wilson and a Steve Ridzik. And then I did pick up a few Hall of Fame pieces here. Uh, one of the highlights is this 58 Willie Mays All-Star. like those All-Star cards. Sport Magazine. You'll notice his hat. It almost looks like a Florida State hat. That's because this picture was probably taken uh, during the transition as the team went from New York to San Francisco. And Tops may not have had uh, the design for the new San Francisco Giants caps that would come out later on in uh, 58. Or it's a, that could be a reason why it's kind of a funny looking hat there. Then a set I do collect uh, slowly but surely working on this 1960 top set. So if I can pick up uh, some nice clean near mint copies of these for around that seven to eight dollar range, I'll, I'll do it every time I can. So that was uh, the case for these three. I want them from the same seller. So just a, uh, a couple of nice near mint sevens from 1960. Just such a beautiful set. Without a doubt, my favorite set to collect is the imagery and the the way they uh, the colors on the even in the names and the, the the color scheme. You know, you've got the main photo and then the solid background on the left, and then the the colors on the bottom with the team logos. It just really appeals to me, and I've always loved that 1960 design. Coming down here, you'll see a couple examples of uh, kind of the mindset of my collecting lately has changed a little bit. Typically, I like to get this vintage stuff, and uh, typically a near mint seven, sometimes a six. But uh, in the case of these, with the prices of cards uh, being what they are right now with the market, I just I decided to go with a little gray, a little lower grade than I typically do for these. I uh, like these 62 batting leaders. I, I typically like these leader cards in a seven from 62. But uh, I got this one for the Al Kaline collection, and was just really content to have it at a six. It looks good. It's good eye appeal on it. And this Lou Brock is a classic example of a card that I've been looking to get for some time, but just never been able to pull the trigger because the price is so high on uh, on this in a six or a seven, which is what I typically will try to pick up a 63 tops in. And I decided just to go with it for four at a very affordable price. I probably think I paid less than $15 for that uh, before shipping. So very content with that purchase and very just glad to have the card in hand. It's a beautiful card. And although you can see it uh, well deserving of that VGX4 with those corners on the bottom being a little a little bit of rounded and discolored and worn, uh, it's still a beautiful card to have in this collection. And you you don't have to have everything high grade, you know. I, I've got a very good uh, Lou Brock collection of some really nicely graded stuff, and I can use this kind of as more of as a filler card. Still need to get his 64 tops, and then I'll have everything from the 60s for him, and then a couple pieces for the 70s and rounding that uh, Lou Brock collection out quite nicely. And then another guy I collect, uh, I guess I collect, uh, in a sense, both these guys, Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda. And like I said, typically I'd like this in a, in a near mint seven. Uh, but suffice it to say, I was content to get this for under $20 in an excellent mint six. Really cool image there of uh, Willie Mays, and Orlando Cepeda showing the lumber. These guys were two of the best hitters of their era. So uh, they could hit for average and for power. So really cool card. Love that card. And then on to uh, the 1970s, a uh, semi-high number here. This Jim Hunter, number 565. Once again, uh, this card typically, it's not an expensive card, but uh, if you can get this in the near mint seven for around 10 bucks, which I did for this, you've got to snag it up. It's uh, got a little bit of centering issues, but it's uh, razor sharp corners and edges, and that's kind of why I picked it up. And uh, it, it kind of fit in my category. I like uh, 70 tops and near mint sevens. And this Brooks Robinson, uh, once again, a, a card that I bought because of the value at the at the six, you know, grade. Uh, if it's in a seven, you're going to probably pay maybe five times more for the card in the seven. It's a very tough card to get in seven or higher. So very content to get this in a six. It, look, it looks good. Uh, a little bit of ding on the corner, and it's probably as a seven. But uh, it doesn't matter to me. I've, I've got a growing Brooks Robinson collection, and I've always admired this card. Not the greatest imagery in the world, but uh, it's actually an action photo, so 
I'll take it. Uh, it looks like he's, stri he's striking out or, or whatever. Probably not the most uh, flattering pose that Tops could use, but still pretty cool card and glad to have it. Then uh, last vintage baseball card here is this 77 OPG. Very similar to the Tops, uh, same image on the front, just a little bit of French writing on the back with a different shade of backing. And then the 1991 Flair Ultra update uh, set. It's got some key cards in here, uh, some some late, uh, some early 90s stars in here. And this uh, Ivan Rodriguez rookie card is probably the, the highlight of that uh, that set. Coming down here uh, to a basketball card from 1972 for my Elvin Hayes collection. 72 Tops basketball is a, is a tough set. And uh, I'm known primarily for the Dr. J rookie. So all these 72 cards have a little bit higher premium on them than uh, maybe the 71, 73s, 74s. So this one is a really nice, I mean, for an Airman 8, it's really good centering, sharp corners, edges, surface is good, and that uh, no print defects with that solid uh, yellow behind the, the portrait of the player, so really, really glad to have that. Card that takes me back to my childhood, uh, rooting for those Oakland A's, the Bash brothers in the late 80s, this Tony La Russa, the man calling all, you know, behind all the the team, the manager there. It's a pretty cool little autograph. Got it for a very affordable price. But a pretty cool nostalgia piece. And then two other pieces of, uh, I mean, this stuff I picked up for nearly nothing, just over a buck on the score, a little over two bucks for the upper deck. Both these are near mint, or excuse me, mint nine, so 96 is on the SGC graded scale. You know, Manny Ramirez stuff is just absolutely dirt cheap. I mean, it is literally got no value you can just pick it up when you can and he was he was a great hitter and then the last piece uh this guy here amon green i uh, got this more of a sentimental piece i don't have it this is the first beckett card i've ever gotten so you, it's a little different for me but uh, i think i paid a dollar 25 for it bundled it with uh with the probstein auction and amon green i uh, went to college with him we were both freshmen at the university of nebraska at the same time i used to see him hanging around the dorms every once in a while he had some friends and that lived a couple doors down for me. But uh, all he did was go on to become uh, like the second leading rusher in Nebraska history. And then eventually, you know, went over to play for Green Bay Packers. And uh, I think he like, became their all-time leading rusher. So a local legend and, and a guy that I've always admired and uh, enjoyed watching his career while it lasted. I'm on green. So that is it for my mail day. Once again, everybody, I appreciate your posts and comments. And I'll talk to you again soon.